A question I'm sometimes asked is how to identify an unknown gear. You might have a gear that needs replacing and need to know what size it is. Or perhaps you have a gear that's attached to some piece of equipment you want to use and you need to work out what kind of gear is needed to mesh with it. Is there a quick and easy method to work it out? Yes, there is. First measure the outside diameter across the tops of two teeth. Then count the number of teeth. Add two. Then divide the outside diameter by this number. This gives you the module size. So this is a 34 tooth one module gear. Thanks for watching. Wait, is that really all there is to it? Well, for probably at least 90% of gears you'll encounter, yes it is. This method can also be used for imperial gears. You just need to do a conversion. There are a few finer points you should be aware of. I'll get to those later. But first, let's try another gear. This gear measures 48 millimeters in diameter. It has 30 teeth plus 2 equals 32. 48 divided by 32 is 1.5. This is a 30 tooth 1.5 module gear. What about this one? It seems to measure about 28.16 millimeters and has 20 teeth. 28.16 divided by 22 equals 1.28 module. That's not a common metric size. This might be an imperial or diametral pitch gear. To convert from metric to DP, we divide 25.4 by the module. To convert the other way, from DP to metric, we divide 25.4 by the diametral pitch. Of course, if you know it's a DP gear to start with, you can measure it in inches and use this formula to determine the size. 25.4 divided by 1.28 comes to 19.84 DP. So this is most likely a 20 DP gear that's slightly under size. Don't expect to always get a nice round number. Gears need to have a small amount of clearance or backlash between the teeth to stop them binding. One way to do this is to space the gears further apart. But it's more commonly done by making the teeth slightly narrower or making the whole gear slightly smaller. Note that if you're measuring a gear with an odd number of teeth, you won't be able to measure across the tops of two teeth, but only across one tooth and one gap, which would result in an undersized measurement. You can try and estimate the correct size, but a better way is to measure the center hole or axle, measure from here to the tip of the tooth, and add twice this measurement to the center. eighty nine point seven divided by twenty one is four point two seven so again this looks like an imperial gear twenty five point four divided by four point two seven comes to near enough six d p Another factor in gear design is the pressure angle. This is the angle of the tooth at the pitch circle, but it's hard to measure directly since the tooth profile is a curve. Pressure angles can range between 14 to 30 degrees, but nowadays nearly all gears are made with a 20 degree pressure angle, including imperial ones. Older imperial gears were made with a 14.5 degree angle, and some specialist gears for high torque applications are made with a greater angle, usually 25 degrees. A smaller pressure angle produces less radial force on the gear's bearings whereas a greater angle produces a stronger tooth. 
20 degrees is a good compromise between the two. If the teeth look like normal gear teeth, then they are very probably 20 degrees. If they look skinnier, then they are probably 14.5 degrees, and if they look fatter, they are most likely 25 degrees. There are of course many other types of gear than just regular spur gears. One that you're also likely to encounter, which often causes confusion, is the helical gear. Where do you even start with this? The first thing to know is that helical gears come in left and right handed types. Or is that the other way around? A left hand will only mesh with a right hand gear. Two gears of the same type will not run together. To tell left hand from right hand, all you need is a hand. Look at the angle of your thumb. If the gear teeth slope the same way as your left thumb, then this is a left handed gear. If they slope the same way as your right thumb, then this is a right handed gear. This trick also works with screw threads. And no, turning the gear around does not affect the handedness. With a helical gear, the outside diameter depends on the number of teeth, the module size, and also the helical angle of the gear. That means the greater the angle of the teeth, the larger the gear becomes, irrespective of anything else. We start as before by measuring the outside diameter. In this case, 73.8 millimeters. Next, we have to measure the helical angle as accurately as possible. This is measured as the angle from what would be the straight teeth of a spur gear, not from the side of the gear. So with this protractor, I need to subtract from 90 degrees. Then count the teeth. And add two. The formula is this. The module is equal to the outside diameter times the cosine of the helical angle divided by the number of teeth plus 2. Plugging in the values we get this. So this is a 39 tooth 1.5 module left handed helical gear with a 34 degree helix angle. Let's try another one. 49.5 millimeters, 10 degrees, 37 teeth. That's a 1.25 module, 37 tooth, right handed, 10 degree helical. Okay then, what's this? Maybe I'll save that for another video.